Hi Leo, welcome to your November 2017 Astro Update. It's Rena here. So in November, Leo, I think you're going to be dealing with family matters quite a bit. Jupiter has gone into this sector in October, and so Jupiter expands that area that it transits, and this is the area of home and family. And so it's reasonable to expect that in a year where you see Jupiter in the fourth house, that you may move to a bigger house, you may find some financial gain through real estate. Even if you stay in your current place, that is, you may have additions to the family, so Jupiter expands things. Um, you may even find some kind of benefit to looking at your family of origin, maybe doing the ancestry kind of a thing, that somehow that leads to you experiencing blessings in your life. And so we've got that, and Scorpio is your fourth house. Okay, Jupiter's in Scorpio. And the sun is in Scorpio for the first three weeks of the month. So you've got the sun there. And Venus moves into that fourth house on the seventh. So Venus in November for you is in your third house, which can include your siblings and other extended family members. And that goes into your fourth house of home and family. So there could be something going on with all of your family, you know, where you are communicating with them. Mercury is in the fourth house until the seventh of the month. So there might be some kind of things going on. Sometimes this could be like an estate issue, like something with um, an inheritance, perhaps. And so that brings the family together. There's a lot of communication. There, there may be documents that need to be signed or what have you. With Mercury in the fourth house, it could be some kind of documents related to real estate or land. And the thing about it is it can be a mixed bag because Mars will be in that third house all month long in Libra. Okay, so... Mars can indicate conflict and there could be conflict with siblings or aunts or uncles. I'm, I, I'm never sure if it's just cousins there in the third house or if it's also aunts and uncles. I thought that might be the sixth house, but whatever, you know, people that definitely siblings and the third house is also communication. So this may be something entirely different for you. Um, you may with, with Mars in the third house, you may be doing a lot of activity that involves public speaking or teaching or internet stuff. And you're very active in November doing that because you, Leo, have a full moon on the 4th of November in the sign of Taurus in your 10th house of career. So this can be a very good time for you to receive accolades or some kind of recognition, attention from others re regarding career success. You know, I, I'm always now making those connections with the Tarot and I think about the Six of Wands and I think that might even be connected to Leo, specifically of all the fire signs where it's like taking your bow. The 10th house of career is at the top of your chart. So it's what everybody sees when they are looking at you and what you bring to the world. And so it's like the light shining on you. It can indicate for people who particularly are in entertainment and that kind of line of work that there is some kind of popularity, maybe, um, I don't know about becoming famous, but something along those lines to some degree. 
So let me see what else is going on. So that's cool. Now, this is the last full month of Saturn and Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is your fifth house of romance. The triggers that you have in November to that fifth house is Mercury going there on the 7th and the sun going there on the 21st. Now, you are ruled by the sun. So the sun transits, um, especially when they go into the fifth house, are very significant for Leos. That's your house. So that could be very good for anyone who's looking for romance because Mercury going there can indicate that you're talking to somebody that you maybe have affection for somebody. The sun there on the 21st could be a sense of that, that warmth, that affection. And it's in the initial stages of a romance before you fall deeply into love because Venus is still in Scorpio, but v Venus will go into Sagittarius eventually in December. And there you go. But the thing about it is you have Saturn in the fifth house and you've had this for two and a half years. So Leo, it's going to be only another after, after November, it'll only be a few more weeks with Saturn in that sector. And that means that if you have felt that your romance life, your romantic life was kind of slim pickings for the last few years, you may begin to, to feel that there's a shift at the end of December and maybe an easing up of things. Saturn gets a reputation, maybe well-deserved, of being quite a taskmaster. But Saturn is there to kind of discipline people, kind of like somebody who is a, runs a boot camp, and get you away from excess and quality over quantity. So sometimes it can seem like things are... Uh, becoming less available, but the quality is what is the important thing. So if you've had less opportunities for romance, hopefully you've had some good opportunities for long-term situations, because this can be something that you can establish a relationship that can last for um, the rest of your life, if you play your cards right, and um, it won't be here again for another 30 years. So that's why it's so important. And then you have a new moon on the 18th in Scorpio, again, that fourth house. So that can be a time when you um, have a new direction or plant new seeds that have to do with your family of origin, your current family, or some housing situation, if you're moving, that kind of thing. Maybe that's what Mars in the third house says, is moving. Um, the third house can be your local environment, so you may be scouring um, new places to live and trying to see if you'd like to live there. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is Neptune going direct on November 22nd in your eighth house. So there may have been uh, some revelations while Neptune was uh, retrograde since November of different things that um, maybe you've kept to yourself that have to do with issues involving things that were secrets, were repressed, uh, things involving death, issues, sex, all these things. You know, the, the eighth house is sex, death, and other people's money. Maybe um, when ne Neptune went retrograde, you found out that your spouse was a gambler and was spending all of your money, your shared resources. 
But um, I'm just giving one example. But when Neptune goes retrograde, it's like the curtain is pulled back and you see things as they really are. And it can be shocking. And it can be, I think more than shocking, though, I think it can be disillusioning because um, Neptune is about illusion. And so Neptune goes direct on the 22nd, the, the day after the Scorpio, I mean, the, um, the, the sun goes into uh, Sagittarius. So I think that you're going to like this because that harsh reality might have been quite intense. Uh, some Leos may have felt that they were a little bit more serious than usual and even less extroverted uh, since June. I don't know if any of you have um, felt that way, but I think that you're going to go back into this idealism. And with the eighth house, it's, it's very interesting uh, to have Neptune transiting through this house. Is it, was that the eighth house? In Pisces. No, that's not Pisces. Leo, Aquarius. Yeah. Because Neptune rules Pisces, a water sign, and the eighth house is Scorpio's house, and that's a water house. So there are themes that have to do with memories, secrets, and emotions that come up with any kind of a transit through this house. But with Neptune, everything is made a little bit less distinct, a little, a le a little less clear, and more, it's sometimes more muddled, uh, more idealistic, more spiritual. That, I think it can be a wonderful transit, actually, because I personally believe that a lot of our psychological problems are due to some kind of la lack of connection with our higher selves and also inauthenticity where false beliefs cause people to live fake lives lives that don't really align with them because they're trying to garner approval from others or their egos are really hooked into something and they just keep going and going like, you know, making a lot of money, but being unhappy inside. And once you free yourself from those constraints, it's amazing. You know, you're flowing with life. And I, I think of Neptune as this flowing river, you know, because it is that water and that water can be quite purifying And the eighth house is a purging of sorts. So you may have been purging yourself of illusions or even secrets while Neptune was retrograde. And now it's going back to the, the spiritual um, influence of just having those dreams and having that sense of magic. You know, I, I think of the eighth house as magic too. Okay, Leo. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome November. Bye.